Hello there, this is the Shadow Ranger and this is my review of NWA Championship Wrestling from Hollywood for January 28th, 2011. Uh, we start off with a promo from the Rotten Ass Monsters. Check it out. Tribe, last week you stuck your nose where it didn't belong and tonight we've got you in tag team action. And don't worry, we're not looking past you. You're easily one of our biggest challenges to date. But I think by the end of the night, Hawaiian Lion will be reduced to being a Hawaiian kitty cat in the lap of Navajo Warrior who will be shedding a single tear for pollution on the highway and because he just lost to the Rock Nest Monsters. And in the off chance that we ever get frozen, when we get woken up a thousand years from now, I want to be able to tell our new robot and what I'd beaten friends that we were the greatest NWA Heritage Tag Team Champions of all time. And when a talking lobster doctor comes up to us and says, who do we beat for those tag team titles? It's going to be such a great privilege to say that it was you, Natural Selection, because we are the Rock Ness Monsters, and we will rock you. Our first match is the Rock Ness Monsters versus the Tribe. Something I, that's been, I've been noticing the past few weeks, uh, what is up with the Tribe's valet? She doesn't seem to fit with them. You, you got Navajo Warrior, was supposed to be like this. Native American with his face paint and his um his like bone hatchet. You got Hawaiian lion with his like tribal tattoos. And you got Olivia who just looks like a normal woman. Shouldn't I mean shouldn't she have a look similar to the, the team? Like shouldn't she be like an Indian princess or a Hawaiian princess or something? Like uh something? Like I don't know, I just look at this team to try and I think like if they're gonna have a valet, it should be like a a, a cute girl in a loincloth with some name like Princess Ayakea or something like that. I don't know. Olivia just doesn't seem to fit. Maybe get her like a loincloth outfit to wear or something. Um I enjoyed this match. It was a good opener. You know, the tribe were two powerhouses like they always were. You know, the rottenest monster showed off their speed and agility. Uh, the teams worked well together, and it was good to watch. Unfortunately, the the ending of this match left me disappointed. Check it out. Could be time. Could be. Could be reservation devastation. But wait a minute. Oh, Rashi Brown and and Slim have a hold of Olivia on the outside. Olivia just got shoved into Navajo Warrior, and now the tribe has turned their attention from their opponents in the ring to two men that are not even involved in this match. Well, this could be poetic justice. You remember there was the tribe that, that may have very well cost Brown and Slim oh, but the Heritage titles. Inside the ring. Look out, explosive amnesia by the former champions. And look at this, good time in the high rent district. Big frog splash to the back of Hawaiian Lion's head. And the Rock Nest Monsters come away with the victory. Incredible win there. Mower Tri versus Slim and Rashi Brown. You know, I like Rashi as a single. The Tribe's okay. I said before, Slim just doesn't do it for me. And that's just what's keeping me. And he's kind of what's keeping me from getting into this feud. But I don't know. Um. Next up, we get two promos. One with Adam Pierce talking about tonight's title match against Joey Ryan, and one with. Austin Aries talking about his upcoming match with Scorpio Sky. Check them both out. Okay, folks, tonight on the broadcast, Joey Ryan, Hollywood's own Joey Ryan, gets his shot at the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. And I, uh, I'll i say it should have come a whole lot sooner. But, but Hold here's it the right there. It should have come a whole lot sooner. Why? What are you? Are you some kind of prognosticator? What? Well, you know, I, I just believe he probably should have had a chance earlier on. And why is that? Well, he's had an awful lot of victories here on television and matches, and he has a, has a pinfall over you. Oh, smart Alec. See, that's a problem with people like you and like people at home. They want to point fingers. They want to make accusations. Looks to me like pointing fingers probably got you in a little trouble there, Marquez. Well, let's see what kind of trouble we're going to get into tonight. So, Joey Ryan, it's been a little too long. A little too long. Joey Ryan, you should be counting your lucky stars that it's taken... What people like Marquez think is too long for you to shot the World's Heavyweight Championship. It's been a little while. Some would say, some experts, some pundits, some idiots, 
like this one standing next to me would say that you deserved this chance a long time ago. But it would seem to me, Joey Ryan, that you've had a lot on your plate. Pretty Peter Avalon, rock superstar chaos. You want to accuse me, David Marquez, of putting them in front of me? Is that what you're saying? Maybe. But that really doesn't matter, does it, Joey Ryan? The bottom line is tonight at the end of this hour, the lights will come down on Hollywood Zone. You should pay close attention over the last several weeks to see what happens to people that get in front of me. And if you have any idea, any question in your mind, make a phone call to Colt Boom Boom Cabana. He could tell you what will happen. Yeah, I'd agree with that. But you said how, what, what people have been doing that you've been doing to people, but there's an individual here that we saw just a few weeks back in Nick Madrid. Where are, you, where are you going? Well, apparently that's all the time that we're going to have our world's heavyweight champion. Now over to John LaQuasto standing by with Austin Aries. All right, Dave, I'm backstage here with the greatest man in the world, A-double Austin Aries. You saw Scorpio Sky just accepted your challenge for next week. It is the main event. What are your thoughts? Well, <laughs> well Mr. LaQuasto, seeing you fancy yourself as a professional, Let's see if we can get this right. It's the greatest man that ever lived, which actually quantifies a whole larger range of people than just the greatest man in the world. Would you not agree? You're absolutely right, sir. I apologize on that. Now, Scorpio Sky has accepted my challenge because as, as I said, one, that's a fluke. Two, maybe begins a pattern, but three, if you can beat me three times, Scorpio Sky, then you can truly say that you are better than the greatest man that ever lived. But that's not gonna happen. You know it, I know it, the people at home know it. You see, that first match, that first victory you have under your belt was a fluke. I had you beat in the middle of the ring, but unfortunately, as sometimes happens with me, my arrogance got the best of me. I wanted to be a little bit too much of a showman. So after I hit my brain buster and he was down for the count, I pulled him up because I wanted to hit the prettiest 450 in all of professional wrestling. But somehow he moved out of the way and he snuck one on me. That will not happen again. You see, when we step in the ring next time, it's all business and no pleasure. Scorpio Sky, you're going down. You heard it from A-double. The I don't get, okay. The main event is set for next week's Austin Aries versus Scorpio Sky on NWA Championship Wrestling. I, I like those, though. Sorry. Uh, John Quasto's back, which is always good, but he wasn't interviewing Adam Pierce. Dave Marquez was. I kind of think it should have been opposite because, you know, him and Adam Pierce together is just gold. I got a, another video up with two... Um, promos of the Quasto interviewing Adam Pierce. They're just really funny together and I like seeing them together. Uh, he was okay with Austin Aries but I just got a feeling if he'd been interviewing Adam Pierce, you would have got something a lot better. Um, next up we have Nick Madrid versus uh, someone else I'm seeing for the first time. This is Gabriel GQ Gallo. I like that name too. Let's do it. Gabriel GQ Gallo. I like that. Um, I like Gallo's music. He looks really good. The match was fun to watch. Nick Madrid is really good at playing a babyface in peril. He easily got the crowd behind him. You know, they was really into him. So was I. And I really wanted, wanted him to win. And I'm glad he did. You know, I, I kind of like they... It seems like they're going to go with him. It's sort of like an underdog who manages to p pull out the win. If that's what they're going to do, I could get behind that. And I haven't seen a good underdog wrestler story in a while. Um, that's, this is my first time seeing GQ Gallo, so I'm going to need to see more of him before I really make a lot of comments on him. Uh, the commentators mentioned that he was a two-time NWA Arizona champion and that he's been wrestling for 10 years. That's cool. You look good and I want to see more of him. Ooh, Shiny Dude promo is back.
I really like this video and as I was listening to it I thought you know I've been hyped by this dude I really hope shiny dude doesn't suck and fortunately I didn't have to wait long to find out if he did because our next match was SoCal Crazy versus Shiny Dude. First up, Shiny Dude's name is the Mirror Image Ricky Mandel. As I say this, I keep wanting to say Buddy Landell. Because <laughs> he kind of has like a Nature Boy thing going too. But his name is the Mirror Image Ricky Mandel. I like the name. And instead of talking about the match, and which the match was pretty good. Let's just talk about Ricky for a minute. I like Ricky. I like Ricky a lot. Uh, first of all, a custom belt with a mirror on it is awesome. You know, normally I hate when I I, uh, I hate seeing like when the heel female wrestler will check her reflection in the title belt. You know, uh, Lay Cool does it. Madison Rain does it, and it's just stupid. It's not stupid when Ricky Mandel does it. It actually makes sense when he does it because one, it fits his gimmick, and two, his belt has a mirror built into it. Yeah. Kudos to who, whomever came up with title belt with a mirror on it. I that's just that's just something I had I've I've never seen before, and I really like it. It works. Um, Ricky plays his arrogant, I'm sexy, I'm beautiful, I'm the best looking man alive gimmick very well um he pulled out one day old Rick Rude gyration move I hadn't seen anybody do that in a while you know he looked good in the ring and he was able to get a lot of heat from the crowd just look at how he ended the match check this out he ducks the clothesline does Mandel likewise so Cal Crazy ducks oh! wait a minute <laughs> he pulled his mask off wow what a show of disrespect officials out here to help the man cover up a count is being administered here by the official Oh my goodness. Wow, this is this is the most disrespectful thing you can do to a luchador right here. The mask means everything to these guys. I can't believe what we've just seen. What a show of disrespect by Mandel. But a heads up move because it helped him garner the victory. SoCal Crazy covering up, did not want to go back in and expose himself and his identity and it's gonna cost him this matchup, folks. Again, just a disgusting victory in my books. Well, we've talked, guys, in the past that that mask can be an advantage, it can be a detriment, and it was in this matchup. I guess sure he's going to have to look at himself in the mirror after that victory. Indeed. Here to get a word with the victor. Who is the leader here? Listen to me. I don't care about SoCal Crazy or his stupid tradition. I don't care about any of you. And I sure as hell don't care about you, Jeff Resnick. I am the mirror image, Ricky Mandel. And I am the best looking champion in pro wrestling history. That was just nasty. He pulled off a luchador's mask. That's just low. That's the lowest of the low. And you know, I really want to see more of the mirror image. In fact, I like everything about Ricky Mandel. Except one thing. His entrance thing. What was up with that thing? It doesn't fit his character at all. He he needs an arrogant heel entrance thing. Let, 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 let's, let's do some comparisons. Let's take another look at Ricky's entrance. But instead, I'm going to put in the theme music of some arrogant heel wrestlers from the past. Alright, first off, let's see Ricky come in to the theme of Mr. Perfect.
Okay, next, the masterpiece Chris Masters. Next up one is Ravishing Rick Rude. And finally, the Nature Boy Ric Flair. Those all work very well with Ricky's uh, with Ricky's character. Now listen to what we actually got as his interest thing. This is who I really want to see, the mirror image Ricky Mandel. Wow, it's flashy. I never met a mirror that he didn't like. In fact, he's got one around his waist. It's a self-proclaimed best-looking champion in history. Never seen anything like that before in my life. A lot of sparkles in there, guys. Certainly are. Tell you what, Mandel really full of what the hell? Get to do some new interest music. Um, next up, John LaCosto's back. John LaCosto on, on TV is always good, and he is having an interview with Mr. Megastar Tommy Wilson. Check it out. Johnny LaQuasto here backstage with one of the new future rising stars of the NWA, Tommy. Whoa, Wil whoa, whoa, whoa! What do you mean future rising stars? I am the star. I am Mr. Megastar, Tommy Wilson. Don't you ever, ever, ever mess that up again. Sorry, Mr. Wilson. Uh, what I was really trying to ask is what's next for you in the NWA after your impressive debut two weeks ago? What do you think I am, some kind of goober? No. Do you think I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do? Do you think I'm just going to reveal my plans? I am an evil genius. I will keep everything right in here, and when it all comes out, people will see the true greatness that is Mr. Megastar, Tommy Wilson. 
Clearly, Tommy Wilson styling and profiling his way to the top. Nothing's going to stop him. Tommy still doesn't do it for me. Huh? I, I, I still need to see a little more of him in the ring. But I'm just not feeling him so far. Um, and next up is tonight's main event. It is for the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. Hollywood's own Joey Ryan versus Scrap Iron Adam Pearce. This was another very good Adam Pearce match. I like Adam Pearce more and more every time I see him. There is... You know, there's a there's too much for me to say about this match. And uh, highlights aren't, aren't really going to do it good enough. It was just really good. So I am going to upload this match to YouTube for you to watch. I liked every minute of, every minute of it. I thought that the ending was some was was really good. Um, they used to the set up the main event of next week's show. Even though neither of these guys are in the main event next week, they were still able to set up next week's main event. It was an all around good match. I enjoyed it, and I think you will too. Overall, this was a very good episode of NWA Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. I'm looking forward to seeing Austin Aries versus Scorpio Sky next week. And I want to see if the standard is going to go after Nick Madrid because Adam Pierce kind of hinted at that last week. I'm also wondering who's going to get the next title shot against Adam Pierce. As usual, my only other complaint is that there was no Willie Mack on the show this week. However, there was also no Manimal, so I think they kind of even things out. But that's really all I have to say for this week's episode. Uh, the link to the website is in the description box. Hop over and check it out. I enjoyed it. I think you will too. This is the Shower Ranger. If you like my videos, please subscribe and follow me on Twitter at TJSMITH3. Have a nice day. Thank you for listening.